May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts align us with the flow of your love, O Lord. Our strength, our peace, our courage, and our Redeemer. Amen. Good morning. I'm really glad to be with you all this morning. Thanks for being here. I bet that you can think back to some times in your life when you didn't know then what was coming for you. You can look back now on a time when you made, say, a move to a different city or a major life commitment, you took another job, maybe you got married, started a significant relationship, and you know now that you had no idea then about how much that decision or commitment was going to change you. Think about a person about to become a parent. It's almost laughable to try to describe the change that's about to happen to them. Some of you are with me here. Maybe they've got a sense that something's Something momentous, you know, is about to happen. If they don't have that sense, and they're really in for a shock, right? And maybe some sense of what questions they should be thinking of, but, but there's no way to fathom the completeness of the change that lies ahead. Imagine if that's you holding your first child and saying, I know exactly where parenthood will take me. I know how I want this journey to change me and challenge me. I know what categories of life this will affect and which ones it won't. It's laughable. Imagine the same questions with a career path or a significant relationship, a significant friendship. I know what this will mean to me, what challenges and growth will result from this it is comical to suggest that we can. That's all of us from time to time, isn't it? At these big moments and at many small moments for us too, we don't even know what questions to ask. And it really could be just about any moment where we might be on the cusp of things being different for us. Our opening prayer, our our collect of the day, reminds us of the swift and varied changes of the world. And that is certainly true, isn't it? You know, our reading from Isaiah today comes from the part of the book known as Second Isaiah. Isaiah is really three books, three distinct sets of material put together later. And we're reading from the second section. The Israelites are in exile in Babylon, the big superpower of the day. We're talking about the 6th century BCE here. And the Babylonians defeat Judah and Jerusalem, culminating in many of the Jewish people being forced into exile in Babylon and the destruction of Jerusalem in the 580s BCE. It's our history lesson for the day. This is one of those central events around which the story turns in the Hebrew Bible in our Old Testament. And this passage today comes from that time of exile. And in this passage, the prophet reports that God says, I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Even in this time of exile, difficulty, isolation, when your imagination is cramped and constrained, I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. That's what we just read. Maybe you're thinking about the last time I delivered you, the Lord says. The time I brought your ancestors out of Egypt through a path in the mighty waters. That's the right starting place for your thoughts now for your imagination now, but don't get stuck just on those old things because I'm about to do a new thing. Maybe you can start to perceive it. My paraphrase here. Author Rob Bell says, sometimes you know the questions that are in front of you, 
In other times, all you really have is a sense of restlessness, a sense that maybe something for you is shifting. He puts it in the words and imagery from Proverbs, a sense that the waters of the soul are stirring. And in the words of Paul in the letter to the Romans, that the spirit is interceding with sighs deeper than words. Or maybe a better translation. The spirit is interceding with groans deeper than words can express. Sometimes you know the questions in front of you. And other times, all you hear are the sighs deeper than words. Paul writes today in the letter we read to the Philippians that he has lost all things for Christ. Whatever I once had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. All the ways I used to know how to order things, the rules and structure of my culture, the ways I knew what to do and say, I regard it all as lost. It's been replaced by the path, the pattern that Jesus shows us, he says, the death and resurrection that we share with him. The death of the old and the new life that he opens for us. Paul's words again. This one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the call of God in Jesus Christ. Straining forward to what lies ahead. You know, sometimes we want to shortcut some of that straining forward. At least I do. You know, just get me on through to what's next. You know, go ahead and show me what's next. That's how Bell puts it. Don't leave me just hearing the sighs deeper than words. But often our best spiritual practices don't take us anywhere. They don't hurry us to what's next, but they take us deep right where we are, deep down, right here. That is so much of what prayer is for us. And this is where our strengths can get in our way, Bill reminds us. Everything has a shadow side. You know, I don't want to stay here listening, waiting. I want to define goals and determine a sequence of tasks and identify a team to help And then I want to plug that into some project management software to keep track of our progress. And you want to do this too, because we've got some great tools for this. I'm talking to y'all. Let's get going here, right? But here's the thing. I'm not even sure if the question's yet. I'm not even sure we know what to ask. For me, change requires some imagination, some time for that imagination to develop. It did for the career change that led me to you. It took some time for me to imagine the questions opening in front of me, to imagine a future different from the past. I'm glad I did, so that my journey would intersect with yours here. Our gospel lesson illustrates another dimension of this too. Without the omniscient narrator previewing the end of the story and telling us Judas' motives, we might very well reach the wrong conclusion on the meaning of this exchange we read in John's Gospel. It would be really hard to process this in real time for us without the all-knowing narrator. I'd come out asking the wrong questions, taking away the wrong meaning. A real transformation will take us beyond just where we think it will go. It will take us beyond just the questions that we have now. 
you know, I want to follow Jesus, but, but I want to stay in control. I want Jesus to enter and transform me just in the ways that I've already identified need changing. It's funny to say that out loud because it doesn't happen that way at all, does it? When we join this pattern of death and resurrection, it will take us beyond just the plan we have for how it will turn out. It will take all of us. It will transform all of us. It will open up all of us. And that's really what's in it for us. A chance to find our soul. To stay with those experiences that we can't figure out in real time, Bill says. Not to numb them away or work them away or push them down, but to stay with them long enough to let them do their work on our soul. And to do that, even when we don't have all the questions yet, when we're straining forward to what lies ahead, sometimes that's right where we should be. Maybe all you know is that you're going through an upgrade. That's how one of Bell's friends puts it. You're going through an upgrade, but you don't exactly know what's, what it's about or what it will mean for you. Stay right there. That sounds just like prayer, like the size deeper than words. The new thing that God is about to do, now it springs forth. Maybe you don't even perceive it yet. Maybe that's right where you should be. Amen.